Look at Peep back there. She's the one at the nest box there, the gray one. And she's trying to make a more comfortable nest for the eggs she just laid. You can kind of see her egg back there. It's kind of an instinctual thing. <laughs> she's not really getting anything in the nest box per se, but she's kind of doing her best there. Oh, she put it on her back. What is that? Huh. All these other ladies, I've never seen them do that, but that's, that's interesting. So she got the, she got her egg there and she's, hopefully she doesn't go broody, but she's going back to sit on it for a bit. She'll probably come back out. I don't know. Interesting. I don't actually know if that's her egg or if she's going to lay an egg. Oh, maybe that's someone else's egg and it just happens to be there, but she wants to make the nest more yeah. nesty for her own egg. Yeah. Huh. Because it looks kind of light to be her egg. Usually her eggs are darker. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see in a minute. Huh. Anyway, guys, I'm uh, currently working out here on a project. And it's actually a, a commission piece. I've been working on my commissions here. Um, so far, it's there's not much to it. Some of you might be able to guess what this is. I'm not making a video of this because there's a lot of... Uh, it's basically just doing the same thing over and over and over again. It wouldn't make much of an interesting video. Since I'm working on these more in-depth commissions in between projects that I'm working on in my house, at the moment, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take me to complete this. Uh, so make sure that you check out my Instagram. I'll be posting some progress pictures of that in there. Although it's a little easier to see what it might become come now. Put your guesses in the, in the comments what you think it's gonna be and make sure you follow my Instagram because there's a lot more stuff on there that I don't necessarily uh, put in the vlogs. Although, if it takes me long enough, perhaps I'll have an update in another vlog. <laughs> These ladies. Oh yeah, also, Ashley was right. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't Peep's egg that she was sitting on. Uh, hers are the darker ones. It was actually, uh, that was, that was Minnie's egg. Um, the same type of bird, just a uh, different color, color shell. Uh, and how we know that, like, well, Ashley already knew that, but it was confirmed because we saw... Does it usually take this long? Yeah. Oh, God. Get out of the way! <laughs> Freaking mini, uh... Out of the way. Photo bombed, and now, now Phoebe is. What the heck? Okay, well I missed it, but there it is. <laughs> she photo bombed right at the wrong instance, and there she's again. <laughs> oh man. Now, if you were watching really closely, you may have seen the egg out of there. Now oh, that would be a good sound effect to insert there. You may have seen it pop out. But uh, I missed it because, oh, but anyway, uh, that's why she was making the nest more comfy. I'm not sure why she put it on her own back, I don't understand that. Um, Alright, so remember how I was saying that I'm doing some home projects? Well, if you watched last vlog, you know that it's all about this walk-in closet at the moment. I noticed a few flaws in uh, some of the drywall, so I'm taking care of that now. It may look like it, but uh, this room hasn't been painted yet, it's just primer. And earlier today, I was uh, first coating some of these dings that I found in here. Um, this right here is our attic access, and actually also our roof access. That's pretty cool, hey? That's, uh, that, that actually opens up. I wanted a skylight in my closet. Uh, you know me. I was just going to try to give you a reason, but there's no reason. It's probably because no one else has a skylight in their closet, probably. 
And then I also wanted it to open because, uh, why not? <laughs> um, but we have it blocked off right now because the little room that I built up there uh, isn't insulated. In fact, it doesn't have any walls either. So we don't want to have any ice damming by having all the heat escape out of there. But that's besides the point. Uh, the reason why I might be touching up this wall here is because uh, getting up there is a challenge. I keep putting my feet against this and damaging it. So one or two coats on there and uh, it'll be good. And most of this actually isn't really that damaged. It's just mostly from my foot hitting it from going up and coming down. Probably mostly from coming down because I'm like hanging from there and I swing out and kick the wall a little bit. It's not that bad. I just, I just don't want it to be there. I could actually do something kind of creative and funky on this wall. Hey, Ash. Yeah. So I have an idea for a feature wall. Wall. Uh, I actually have the same idea for another wall downstairs. I've teased about it many times. So some of you might remember this and some of you might not, but stay tuned for another vlog where I'll eventually do that when we start doing stuff downstairs. But besides that, you know what I'm talking about. I'm thinking about doing something like that in there. Remember what I did, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, what I did at Confections Keiko in the, uh, in the bathroom? Yeah, I was thinking about doing that in our closet. A jellyfish? <laughs> no, <laughs> not a jellyfish. <laughs> but like, okay, you know how we're using a lot of wood in there? Uh -huh. I was thinking it would be cool to do a tree. That would be cool. Okay, if you don't like it, then we'll take it off. It'll be easy to take off. In fact, I might not even like it. If I don't like it, I'm going to take it off. So, even if you do like it, I'm going to take it off. Even though it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> and then, after this, we'll, we'll go grab something to eat. Okay, guys. I can't tell you how many times this has happened where I've started a project, like this one, two years ago? Not quite two years ago. When we first bought this house, we did a lot of demo and reno. Uh, and then we kind of ran out of money. And so we had to put things on hold. But I can't tell you how many times that that has been a blessing where I've thought of other ideas, better ideas aesthetic wise. Although this might be a huge giant fail. We'll see. But it's pretty awesome. I think tying the whole room together with a... Uh, I stepped in some mud here because I spilt some mud. Bummer. I'm gonna have to re-sand that because it's not gonna accept a stain or a finish, depending on what we decide to do uh, in that area. It'll be like a weird spot. Dang it. That's okay. Anyway, let me take that off so I don't track all that wet mud all over the place so that we don't have a, it would suck if we had just weird splotches all over the place. Um, it would be smart if I put down a drop cloth, but I'm not gonna do that. What was I saying? I think it would be cool to have like a little feature here that would uh, be a subtle, uh, I don't know what it's called. Hey. <laughs> What's the word? If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I'm not exactly a wordsmith. I wouldn't be the person you'd go for, go to for uh, some intellectual conversation. Uh, so, I don't know. This is just going to be a cool thing here on the wall. Let's just go with that. A cool tree. A softwood tree, in fact. Which actually reminds me of a cool little factoid. I don't know if it's that cool, and a lot of people know this. Uh, I've known this for quite a while, but I was reminded of it in the last vlog when I was talking about softwoods and hardwoods and my floor being a softwood. Someone in the comments actually mentioned that softwoods come from conifer trees, which is true. Um, how you can tell by looking at a tree if it's a softwood or hardwood is uh, if it's got leaves or if it has needles. So if it's a deciduous tree, it'll have leaves, of course, and uh, that means it'll have typically hardwood, although there could also be a soft hardwood like poplar or something like that. And the same is true about uh, coniferous trees. 
Trees with needles are typically softwoods, or they're all considered softwoods, but there are harder softwoods such as hemlock. Embellishments! That's the word I was looking for, embellishments. But anyway, thank you, commenter, whoever you were, about reminding me, for reminding me of that uh, factoid about softwoods and hardwoods. I hope that all made sense. As you know, I'm terrible at explaining things. But anyway, this is more or less what it's like. I just gotta wait for it to dry. What do you think? I like it actually. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Subtle. Well, it's very obvious that it's there, but it's kind of like a subtle detail. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like not a big statement piece. And like, this is not necessarily a feature wall, but it's a feature on this tiny little yeah. wall. I dig like, it. I like a unique piece of art. Yeah. And there are, I'm not the first person to do this. Lots of people do this, but uh, there's not, there's not a lot of this that you would see in someone's home typically. So I think it's cool to add it. Yeah, I like it. And like I said, if I didn't like it, I could easily just whoosh, scrape it off. All right, ready to get something to eat? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just have to grab a sock. some time to dry so I'm just doing some sanding and since this is more of a textured finish rather than a uh, flat smooth finish obviously we don't need to use a light to light check it because it doesn't matter that it's not perfectly smooth in this area everything else that I've done in here I will have to light check but this part here is basically done after a few little sponge visits here. Sponge visits. You know, because this is a sponge, sanding sponge. <laughs> I realize that this is in everybody's taste, and that's okay, because uh, I wouldn't insist on doing this in someone's house that didn't like it. I might, I might ask them if they want it, but I would never be like, oh no, you have to have this, if they absolutely didn't like it. Oftentimes, with clients, I will say, hey, I'm gonna try something. If you don't like it, we can start over. And this is one of the things that I did uh, in that cake bar that I built for my friends that I was mentioning earlier. They had no idea how that would turn out, and frankly, neither did I, because that was the first time that I ever did that. But in the end, they liked it. If they didn't, I would have just scraped it all off. I've only done this a few times, but... I like it. Okay. It's time to prime. Can you tell that this company is not a sponsor? <laughs> so I'm just using a duo primer sealer undercoat. If you're going to do this in your own house, uh, just know that you don't have to do anything special or specific. Just a regular uh, primer sealer will do. The main thing is you want the paint to have something to stick to and it's not going to stick to the mud very easily. So we'll just get this stirred up and then paint it right directly onto the uh, sculpture if you will. Oh good, I'm just putting the primer on now and then we'll be able to paint everything. I already did everything else in here so. Everything's fine? Yeah, so after, after this we'll be able to paint. It's gonna look cool. Yeah. It doesn't take long to dry, hey? Like the other mud? No, well, overnight. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, Chia. Oh, don't eat that, Chia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go I have to sand some of this anyway, so it's fine. Chia, come here. <laughs> She's like, hmm, what's that? <laughs> so Ashley's going out to the coop to do uh, some uh, prep for when we bring the chickens back out there. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna go give her a hand out there. Now I'm using a brush so I can get into all these little nooks and stuff. And then I'm also adding some texture with the brush, but I will also go over it with a roller here to get rid of the brush marks where I don't want them to be. And then after that, I'll go back in with the brush to re-add in that texture I lost by rolling. 
Yeah, it's just kind of as I see fit. Kind of here and there. And these details don't really matter, I guess, but I like to throw them in there, I suppose. I've never done a tree like this before. I imagine some people might be asking, won't this all chip off? Uh, could be. It's not likely that it'll be a huge issue. It might chip off a bit, but I'm actually not worried about that at all because once this is painted, it'll be nicely sealed and it will be relatively smooth. So unless I'm hitting it with something sharp or uh, really catching an elbow on it, it's probably gonna be fine. It's just one of those cases where uh, time will tell. And these hairs are so annoying. These brush hairs. Does it get stuck in there? These cheap brushes? Pro painter? More like you're gonna buy the cheapest brush, so let's put a name on it that makes it seem like it's <laughs> seems like it's good quality. Okay. Once I get this hair, we are gonna be done here. If I can get that. You're not going to win, hair. Well, that's really in there. There it is. There it is. Okay, let me just roll that real quick. So I got fingerprints all over it. That's... But no, no, we don't want fingerprints if we don't need to have fingerprints. Okay, add this texture back in there. Couple finishing touches. There we go. I think I like that. Now I may do, well, I'll probably do a second coat. It's always good to do more than one coat. Um, I'm not a painter, but the rule of thumb, at least in my experience and the jobs that I've done commercially, like say when I did an apartment building, for example, uh, after I was done taping, they would come in, they would have a guy who did all the dusting and then they would have a painter go in, or usually a painter's helper, who would spray only the mud, and then I guess someone would back roll that. And then after they did all the units in this apartment building, all the mud, they would go back around and then prime the entire uh, area, the whole square footage of the walls and ceiling afterwards. So I'm gonna probably do the same thing here where I will prime this whole thing over again, along with everything else. Man, I just, I just rolled that, along with everything else in here. And there's a reason why I'm not a painter. There's that, that thing where you're trying to keep up with your own paint job because everything dries as it's being painted and then it looks like you have to go back. That's kind of what I'm doing here. So before I get frustrated and screw up, right after this, there we go. I'm gonna go outside and give Actually, a hand. It's getting a lot warmer. Almost. Oh, I can see Ashley. Uh, she's raking up the uh, all the old debris out of the uh, the run there. But anyway, it's getting warmer, and it's, therefore it's almost time to put the chickens back in when it's consistently about zero or better. Just grabbing uh, shop vac because we're gonna do uh, a full-on clean uh, cleanup of the uh, coop there because we are potentially going to be starting to use a new uh, bedding. Uh, so on a trial run here, we have something in mind that we picked up uh, a couple days ago. Okay. Okay. Vacuum out. So what Ashley's doing here is she's taking all the uh, shavings that we had in the coop here. This is the bedding that we currently use, which is just a bunch of uh, wood chips that we just get from the farm store in these packages here. Uh, we use it twice because uh, uh, it doesn't have a lot of crap in there because Ashley cleans it out uh, every, uh, every day. So what we do is once we figure that it's Time to get changed inside. We'll sweep it out into the run here. Uh, you can see that it's already been cleared out. All the stuff that uh, was in here 
then just gets uh, shoveled into our compost pile and our compost pile is not is not much yet uh, we, we plan on doing something a little a little less eyesorey here in the future but for now we have uh, just a pile of chicken crap and shavings and whatever else uh, we'll be changing that probably this summer I guess we're dealing with a few changes changes for improvement now the reason why we want to change the bedding is because this stuff contributes to a lot of dust here and dust can and does lead to health problems and as you guys know we lost my favorite bird Sunny to a respiratory issue and the dust probably did not help that. Look, Ashley's even wearing a, a mask. I should probably be wearing a mask in here. It is very dusty. Um, yeah, we did some research about which bedding is best. Apparently hemp is a lot less dusty or dust free even. So we'll try that. So yeah, that's what we're gonna, that's yeah. what we're gonna try. But first, uh, I guess we'll vacuum it out and get rid of some of this. <laughs> We <laughs> we want to start with a we want to start with a with a with a clean slate, if you will, so that we can see how effective the new bedding is. Yeah. Okay, let me grab that vacuum. No cowboy went riding out one dark and windy day. On the ridge he rested at, he went along his way. When all at once somebody heard a red eyed cow, he saw plowing through the reggae sky and up the cloudy draw. The brands were still on fire and their hooves were made of steel. Black and shiny and their hot breath he could feel A bullet of fear went through a maze that thundered through the sky We saw the riders coming hard And he heard their mournful cry Yippee-i-yo Yippee-i-yo in the sky bam oh <laughs> well there we go moment of truth let's see if this is as good <laughs> as good as they say so <laughs> that's hilarious that that happened I uh, hope I got a good angle of that so there are three main bedding options that you can have Number one, and probably the most popular, would be straw, I would say. Yeah. Right? Straw has some pros and cons, as do all of them. The cons, the reason why we don't use it is because of mainly pest control, but also there's like, uh, it can get moldy if it gets yeah. wet, um, stuff like that. It's hard to scoop the poop out, which I like to do. Oh, yeah. That's and yeah, if you're going to be cleaning every day, yeah, scooping would be easier with, with what we use. So option number two would be wood shavings uh, or chips, although chips are different, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say wood shavings, which is what we use. Downfall of that. So dusty. So dusty. And like I said earlier, that could have contributed to Sonny's condition. Mm -hmm. um, so all the dust everywhere is a huge uh, issue with cleaning. Uh, like if you're, you know, doing what we just did. And also for the chicken's health. And probably another main downfall would be uh, holding too much moisture. It's possible to hold too much moisture. You want it to hold, like, you want the crap, if you will, to stick to it so that it's easy to clean up. Yeah. But if you come into the coop with wet boots on or something like that, and it's winter... That could contribute to like uh, frostbite issues and stuff like that, especially if you don't have lots of ventilation like we do. So that's a downfall of that. And then there's the... also sand. Oh, sand. Yeah, some people use sand in their litter as well. It's not great for Canada because we, we use sand in here. Sorry, yeah. go on. I was gonna say it's not as insulating. 
Oh, it's, okay, yeah. So where we are, today it's a balmy minus 25, although it's only minus 12 in here. Mm -hmm. It's still cold, but not, not that cold. Not as cold as outside. Um, a, a big thing that people do for insulating their coops, especially in the winter, would be, uh, what is it called? Deep litter. Deep litter. Deep litter method, which is basically uh, adding bedding every so often. And it, their, their crap kind of creates a, like a bio heater. Yeah if you want to call it yeah. that. And uh, I would say the downfalls to that are probably, it looks gross. Yeah. It, it gets really tall and it probably reeks. Well, apparently if it's done properly, there's not much of a smell. Oh, but well. I, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. The coop that we tore down last year, if you guys watched those vlogs, uh, that was disgusting and that really smelled. Although to be fair, there were no chickens in there and it was empty for a co couple years, at least two or three years. So, yeah. although our garden loved it. So much, the pumpkins loved it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, downfall of that. Also in our coop here, we, the reason why we don't do, another reason why we don't do that is our, our floor here is made out of wood and that would rot it. So I'd say that's probably more so for a, like a dirt floor or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't even think a lino floor would would hold that back because lino is porous but yeah. yeah so we don't do that um sand we don't do sand i guess i didn't even know that was an option we do have sand here because they they have uh, a lot of time spent here on the perch and they crap a lot um yeah so pest issues are cons and stuff like that the reason why we actually have this here this is fake this is not uh not real wood this is just panel board and the reason why is because when they roost here, pests like to go into the cracks of, of real wood. And then when, when the chickens are roosting, they kind of come out. Lice and mites and ticks and stuff. And then they'll go into the bird and do all that uh, damage sorts of... Well, it's also for easy cleaning. In the summer when we do deep cleans, we use soap and water and we wash oh, everything down. Oh, right. Yeah. We didn't do that now. It's winter. As you can see, it's kind of gross. It's winter. We don't want to add water to the environment because of hyperthermia so issues and all sorts of stuff like, like that. Right yeah, it's not good. So that brings me to the third option, which apparently is now the fourth or fifth option. <laughs> uh, we are going to be using hemp. And it says here on the bag. The main thing that I read, the main benefit is it's dust free and parasites don't like it and it absorbs pretty good. Okay, cool. And then it also Says it's like eco-friendly, like it's compostable. Although so are the wood chips and all that stuff. Lightweight and effective, reducing labor storage and disposal costs. I would say also, since it's kind of has the same consistency as straw, it's probably like it's hollow like straw. It probably has a really good insulating factor like straw and it's, but it's smaller. So it'll be easier to clean up. It's not long like straw. Yeah. And so far, this ain't dusty at all. There's no dust flying out of there. If I did that with wood chips, we would see a little cloud here. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is not dusty at all. Awesome. We bought two bags because we weren't sure how how what the what the volume would be if it would cover everything but it actually looks like one bag will be enough awesome another pro it doesn't smell bad but neither did the wood chips to be honest and neither does straw and neither does sand probably it smells sweet it kind of does smell sweet doesn't it this is even a lot fluffier it looks great yeah, I think it'll be done. Let's see how the chickens like it. Yeah, so we'll be moving the chickens in here when it gets uh, uh, to the zeros, uh, which should be coming up here right away. Next couple of days. And that's just to facilitate a smooth transition because they're in a warm shop right now, so it's best to move them out while it's warm. Put them in the nest boxes, maybe. Yeah. I hope the birds like this. This is a little different than they're used to. Okay. Stick a little guard on there. There we go. One over there as well. 
it's easier. <laughs> it's easier if you. Yeah, there you go. You got it. There we go. We uh, make these removable so it's easier to uh, scoop out the old stuff. And you know what's cool is they actually also make hemp pads for nest boxes. We're not sure if we're going to use those or not, but it is an option. We may do that in the future. We'll see how this works though. Yeah. And then we actually won't need the things to be removable. Yeah. All right, I like it. Hopefully the chickens like it. I think they're going to. Hopefully. Stay tuned for another vlog. In the meantime, I think I'm going to go put a second coat of primer on that tree. Made the ladies a boyfriend. Let's see how they react to him. I don't know. If you guys remember a long time ago when we first got chickens, the original four that included Henrietta and Sonny and then two others that got killed by a fox, they didn't care one bit about the metal rooster. And it looks like these girls don't care either. I guess, how can I expect them to? They're not that dumb. <laughs> Chickens are known for being a little dumb, but, but probably not this stupid. <laughs> Although, they do use fake birds as decoys to keep away owls and hawks and stuff, so... I'm not sure what that's all about. Here, let's, let's see, maybe, maybe they think this other side is his better side. Let's turn that around. What do you think, ladies? Okay, away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except for Plum. Plum's like, hey there. Handsome. Rooster, rooster with an R. Eh, get it? No, they're not having it. All right, ladies. I'll, I'll go put them back then. I'll go put them back. <laughs>